is in your hands my life is in your hands you took control when i was young when i was not able my life is in Welcome to my show called Inspire Blessings with Jean Marie Prince. And today we have a very special guest, and it was actually put together by uh, Kiara from Rebellious Music in, uh, Entertainment. And I just want to thank you, Kiara. Uh, and also, St. Anthony's High School had actually given us the venue to be able to do this. So, thank you so much. Um, basically, uh, my guest today is a very special guest, uh, Dr. Alveda King. And um, mm -hmm. As we know, the fact that uh, she's also the minister of the gospel, you know, ministers for the gospel of Jesus Christ and serves as a director for African American Outreach for Gospel of Life. Uh, also, you know, like Priest for Life. Um, she's also the daughter of the late slain civil rights activist, Reverend A.D. King, who was the younger brother of uh, Martin Luther King, um, Jr. So Dr. Elvita um, is also a grateful uh, mother of six children and she's a uh, donny grandmother so thank you so much for being my guest appreciate it thank you? you so much for this opportunity and hello to you and your listening audience i hope everyone can hear me yes i hope so yeah they can actually hear you thank you so much um yeah so basically we know that uh you know that you're an activist pro-life and it's very important for you and because we know that human life is sacred to god and we are created in his own image and we do not have the right to take you know the life of anyone let alone an unborn baby and so we know you know jeremiah 1 4 to 5 you know says now the word of the lord came to me saying before i formed you in the womb i knew you and before you were born i consecrated you so knowing also that 43 years ago roe versus wade has been immeasurably devastating when abortion was uh, legalized that 57 million babies basically you know were murdered and we know in the holocaust um 11 people 11 million people were murdered which is wrong and abortion is now five times that amount so um you know sometimes you have to think to yourself what is wrong with this world and how selfish and evil people have become for that mighty dollar so um you know and, and sometimes you wonder why don't you know people fear god enough to do the right uh, thing and stop being selfish so we know that um, you are, you know, uh, the director for the Priest for Life. So what is Priest for Life? Well, I'm the director of African American Outreach for Priest for Life. It's a large Catholic organization that stands for the sanctity of life. I am a non-denominational evangelist and believe for Dr. Martin King Jr. I've been director of African American Outreach for Priest for Life for 10 years. Okay, great, great. Um, so, you know, so the thing is, is that um, we know that, you know, when people have abortions and sometimes how it can in affect their life, so why have you gotten involved in being a pro-life activist? Well, we'll go back a little further and look at the Catholic Church and the 1950s. My mother and dad were engaged and she was a student at college. And she wanted to finish college before she married and had her children. Uh, she did conceive me at that time. And my grandfather, Dr. Martin B. King Sr., the father of Dr. Martin B. King Jr., and my father, Dr. A. G. K. and my aunt, Dr. King King Farris, Dr. King said, no, you cannot have a GSP. Abortion is illegal, but... Mm hmm Right. But, 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 but that C and C would have aborted me. And so he says, no, I saw her in a dream 30 years ago. And she's going to bless many people. She has bright skin and bright red hair, and she's going to bless many people. Yeah, I've been, <coughs> excuse me, I've been watching uh, some of your interviews, and I see how your grandfather has been such an important part of your life, where he has such faith and just such conviction. 
of why life is important. Right. Uh, is important. So it, that was, uh, a lot of that was unknown to me. My mother didn't even tell me about that until just a few years ago after I started working to like the fullness of it. But I know that in his lifetime, people always talked about my grandfather and seen me. So the reason I'm saying that I was born into a family that by the hell used to think of his life. My uncle Martin Luther King Jr. watched that the Negro cannot win if he's willing to sacrifice the futures of his children for immediate personal comfort and safety. And so we have to know that. He said, in just as anywhere, the place is just everywhere. My father stood with my grandfather, Daddy King, at the time that I was conceived. And so I was born into a family that was always going to value the sanctity of life. I was deceived to myself in um, 1970. I had two secret abortions. And uh, I thought abortion was okay because a woman had a right to choose what she does with her body, which is actually true. A woman does have a right to choose what she does with her body. Right. But the baby is not her body, so we have to ask where's the lawyer for the baby. And so that, and, and in 1983, when I had a very strong Christian experience and accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I realized that my thinking was wrong. So from 1983 until today, I have been a pro-life voice in America. Right. So how old were you when you had this? How old were you when you had these secret portions? I was uh, married. I had a living child, and I was in my, my very early twenties. Okay. So what made you, at that point, say, you know what? I really don't want to have these children because it's not like you were a teenager. You know, uh, it no, it, it was not. <coughs> it was not like that. The first one, I had had a live. My first baby was born right uh, nine months after I got married. Oh, about ten months after I got married. So I got married when I was young, and I got married uh, and had that first baby. And after the first baby, I went to the doctor for an examination, and instead of giving me a pregnancy test or anything like that, the doctor just gave me a uh, DNC in his office. And we found out later that he was affiliated with Planned Parenthood, and part, part of Planned Parenthood's agenda was to convince medical doctors and uh, leaders in the Negro community, we will call, to help control the birth of our people. Right, right. And so I, I did that, so I didn't even know I was having the first Right, so, so would you, right. yeah, so would you yeah. say in, in the fact that the, really the first abortion wasn't based on your decision? No, it was not. Definitely right. was not. And, and then my doctor sent me to Planned Parenthood and said they would help me. And uh, my marriage began to have trouble and all that, everything that was going on. Uh, my father was killed, uh, had been killed. My uncle, Martin Luther King, was killed in 68. My dad was killed in uh, 69, one week after he walked me down the aisle when I got married. Wow. And so here I was, married. Uh, getting trying to get advice from a doctor who was secretly involved with Planned Parenthood. Right, 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 right. Um, and would you say at that point, though, you were pro-life? You, you know I saying? was like, not. Well, the word <coughs> pro-life, that, that concept at that time did not exist. Okay. I was pro-God. Let's say I was pro-God, and God, of course, is, is values the things that you're like, God says, choose life. So I was kind of coerced and tricked Second abortion, Planned Parenthood told me that I had glaucoma tissue and I wasn't ready to have another baby, and they had a safe procedure because the law had passed called Roe versus Wade on my birthday, January 22nd, 1973. And so they recommended this procedure for a mysterious female ailment, you see. And so that's how I ended up with my own abortions. I had damage to my body uh, because of those abortions, I had a miscarriage. Uh, problems with my cervix, problems in my memory system. So over those years, but I was going to abort a baby in, in the mid-70s. And I was divorced by that time. And I was uh, dating a young man and I got pregnant. And, and by then, I was so short. And so I was going to have an abortion, but I told my grandfather, and he said, no, they're lying to you. That's not a lump of flesh. That's my great-grandchild. And the baby's daddy said that's 46 chromosomes, 23 for me and 23 from you, and I want mine back alive. Mm -hmm. So those two men convinced me to have that baby. And then in 1983, I became so like myself when I was born again. Right, right. Well, I'll tell you, thank goodness. Um, 
thank goodness for the strength of your of your grandfather. Yeah, you know? and yes, very strong. Very, he saved me from abortion, and he saved uh, my my second son, second born son, from abortion. Right, right, right. Um, what I wanted to actually, I, you don't know my story, but I'm actually now taking a platform of standing uh, and and about pro life because I myself was found two days old in a public bathroom in Seoul, Korea. And that's where my life started. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. And so I actually then lived in an orphanage till five years old. It's amazing. Uh, and then I was adopted to an American family. So to me, I, you know, my story is at least it's a better option than being aborted. So it's amazing with the story that God has given me the testimony and in which he blessed me to, uh, to write a book where I literally heard, do the book. So I wrote a book called Inspired Blessings, Led by God to Inspire the World with Love, Faith, and Hope. Um, very interesting w with that, uh, along with the fact that God blessed me to, um, to actually um, write a song. And, and in which I'd like to play for you. Uh, it's called For I Am Not Even Born. And I wrote this song because I was actually uh, driving along the road listening to Hope Radio, and in which the guest was talking about partial birth abortion and how they do that is they actually drill a hole in the skull and they suck out the brain and then they crush the skull and then they remove the baby with the forceps so I mean I was shocked to hear that to hear that so then God had put upon my heart to write the song and in which I'd like to play for you and I just feel that uh, the song says a lot it's been a blessing um, and I'm not a songwriter so the whole thing is a miracle um, and I have this uh, lady, e Emmy Pellegrino, who actually sings it. So if you could take the moment, pretend you're hearing, listening to the radio. Okay. Please let me live. Don't let me die. If you know God, then do His will. Give me a chance to breathe the air My Father in heaven has given me Let me see the splendor Of all the beautiful things that were created for me to see Let my soul long for God Let the Spirit of God come alive inside of me Right now I do not know right from wrong for I am not even born Please let me live Don't let me die If you know God Then do His will You are ending My Taking my life away from me If you're unable to raise me Then give me up To a loving home Where parents are praying for me Don't disobey Your father's word And I will feel his presence and God will do His will within me Please let me live Don't let me die If you know God 
like I said, that that's the song um, that God blessed me to write, and I just feel that you know it's so important for people to really think about what they're doing before they would actually take that final step. And um, but you know, I I need to interrupt for a minute to say that Dr. that's so beautiful. And there are some scriptures, you know, be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And we have to occupy the kingdom, of, you know, the kingdom, taking the kingdom for God. And in God, life is, in God, the kingdom of God, life is sacred. So that song, Letting Them Don't Let Me Die, that's just absolutely beautiful. And I was uh, praying as I was listening, asking God to receive that song and to open the heavens and let that cry reverberate. And I believe certainly that uh, your song is part of what is happening. Because there are other people who are writing songs. I have some songs myself. Uh, there are just songs that for life and for truth. And the voices of these beautiful bands, including three of mine, two of what it one this era. So, and then your voice, of course, you did live. You were rescued. You left your beautiful survivor. So all of this is so very important. And I pray that the listeners have the impact of that. Because it is very, very important. And I do want to say, anyone who's listening, if you have a poem, a dance, a picture that you need to draw, a song that you need to write or sing, uh, something that you need to invent or create or do, uh, a blog, there's just so many things that you can do. A book, uh, an invention where you can make money and dominate your life. I mean, there are so many things that you can do. So this beautiful creativity that has just been shared with us is so very important. Well, like I said, it, it's definitely a God thing because I'm, I'm not a songwriter. But getting back to um, what would you say if, if you were had an opportunity that you knew that there was a teenager who uh, just found out she was pregnant and was thinking of having an abortion? How would you how would you talk her out of it? Well, there's so many uh, that I have met, I've talked to, I've gone to some of them. Uh, my own children, I had to talk them out of getting abortions, so I have. Uh, three little babies that were born uh, almost five years ago now, and uh, their parents wanted to avoid them. So the truth is, the first thing they need to hear is, God loves you, Jesus loves you. I love you. We love your baby. We let us help you. You don't have to do this by yourself. And that's the first thing they need to know, you don't have to do this. And if somebody is there to show that the pregnancy care centers are very successful, and they let us help you. So that's the first thing. The love of God needs to touch and reach those girls and the fathers of the baby so you can communicate to the dad. And so that's the first thing. And then you get get them to look at his ultrasound, that pregnancy care centers, and they're all over America now. And just offer that love, that help, that support, not the condemnation. And uh, once you begin to help get into their lives and lead them to the love of God, then you find that they find the value of themselves and to the baby. Right, right, right. Um, no, definitely a great answer because it's the truth. I have uh, actually two students who uh, is going to just ask you a question. So um, I'm going to just have them come up. And uh, Nicole uh, Paparella, <coughs> excuse me, just getting over cold. So, Nicole, if you could come up here and speak to Dr. Alveda King and, and just ask her your question. So, if you could speak loud enough so she can hear it. How can people my age be most effective in the pro-life movement? Well, you know, Nicole, that's a beautiful, powerful question. And if you follow what happens every January with the March for Life or the Walk for Life, then there are middle school children, even elementary school children who come with their parents and middle school students and high school students and college students who come together to march for life, walk for life, they fly, they tweet, they contribute their gifts and talents. And so, and then if you have friends who have these issues or someone close to you, some of the information, you, they can be directed to take a care, check, take a care centers. And actually, this is one that people don't necessarily understand, but if you wait to become sexually intimate, until you're older and married and ready to be parents, then those questions don't ever come into play. It's not as hard as you think because if you did it in doing your schoolwork and studying and extracurricular sports and things like that and you're learning to do your own creativity, you may probably don't need to waste time uh, with sex until you're ready to take on the full responsibilities of that anyway. So those are things that you can do to help 
and there are so many activities now for young people. Uh, and all the public organizations have youth outreach organizations. Over at Faith for Life, we have Brian Kemper with Stand True, for instance. And so I think it's StandTrue.com, and they go all over the country uh, promoting in the summer. They take summer tours for life and things like that and go up for more life. So they live right on the sidewalk. Pro life messages with chalk on the sidewalk. Okay? They do all kinds of things. But you need to be informed and educated. This particular program today is just so powerful that has been designed for you to even ask me that question. So I thank you for that question. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And then we have here Natalie being party. Um, I just have a question, um, like how is it being related to someone so influential and if that affected your belief on pro-life? Well, my whole family has a, just a set of values. I, I write about it in my book, King Rule, for the, the adult version that is a children's book over at Lulu.com, King Rules for Children. And so they're related to Martin Luther King Jr., who believes everything I just told you, uh, to have a strong father and mother who brought him up to value uh, life, love God, and those kinds of things. So don't believe anything that you hear about Dr. King would have supported abortion. He would not. He did not in his lifetime, and he would not. And so the, the fact that I did was because I had wrong information. And so we want you to get truth and look at truth. And then be brave enough to pursue that. Martin Luther King Jr. understood the truth about uh, Acts 17, 26 of all people. God created all people of one blood. And since we're one blood, he said we must learn to live together as brothers. And I had sisters or parish as fools. So when we're brothers and sisters, even when we disagree, we can communicate without hurting each other and without killing our babies. Thank, thank you so much. No, it, again, it's the truth. Um, I know that you're short of time, and uh, my, my show is up as well. But I just want to thank you so much, uh, Dr. Alveda King, for taking the time to be able to, um, to share you know, why you uh, are pro-life. And uh, it is so important that we have many more people like you being able to speak up for the babies that are unborn. So um, I just want to thank you so much for your time. And um, it has it's an honor, it has been an absolute honor to talk to you and the young people. Thank you, you so much for thinking of me. Yes, and you know, Dr. Alvita King, if you like my Inspired Blessings Facebook page, you'll actually be able to uh, see this uh, or listen to the video as well when it does uh, go on my show. Okay? Well, let's to do it. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, be safe. God bless. Okay, God bless. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. So Dr. Alvita King uh, had to uh, do something, and in which now I just wanted to kind of talk about Respect uh, Life Ministry there at, from the St. Anthony's High School, and in which, um, what is Respect Life Ministry? Uh, well, with Respect Life, uh, we spend a lot of What's your name, first Oh, my name is uh, Justin Lachella, and with me, I'm a junior here. And I joined when I was a freshman, and for the past two years, uh, we meet once every month for mass, like at least once each mm -hmm. each month, and then we usually go pray outside the clinic that's um, uh, down the road, like in um, uh, the neighboring town. And we yeah, we usually pray outside. We do the rosary, and then uh, we come back. And then like our highlight for the year is when we go on the march for life. And this year, like because of the storm, it, like we did go down, but we couldn't actually march. Mm -hmm. But it was still like a good experience to go anyway. Sure. It, it just good to see like everyone like go down. Yes. And your name is? My name is Natalie Pincardi. Okay, so you did go for the March for Life. Yes, I did. What did you think of it? Um, well, I'm, I believe in pro-life, and it hit me, like, I think in 10th grade. I was just like, in theology, we talked about abortion, and I was like, oh, like, I don't believe in it, like, I never. So I want to join this ministry, so I did, and this is, like, my first year in the ministry. And so I thought the March for Life was, like, very, like, I thought it was powerful. Even though we didn't get to march, just like at the mass and the rally, I thought it was like, I don't know, it's just something I believe in. So I, I had a good time and like a lot of people went with us. So mm -hmm. it was good. And I know you spoke before and I asked uh, Dr. L. Vader King a question. So um, what's your name again? It was? Nicole. Nicole. Full name? Nicole Paparella. Okay, Paparella. So what would you like to say and share? Well, I had a lot of fun at the March for Life and 
I always try to do as much as I can to like, convince people that abortion is wrong. Mm -hmm. My dad works with the Life Center, my aunt works with the Life Center, and my aunt has worked with uh, women who've had an abortion and, you know, like they, how they feel after. Right. So she works with them, and my friends, they don't feel the same way that I do about it, so I always try to convince them. Well, we always know that we have to be the fish that swims the opposite, right? To do the right thing sometimes. Thank you. And your name? Um, to you, Kim. You're Kim? Okay, can you speak a little louder? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just sit here. Just, so if you could just say it again, um, what you were saying before. Oh, oh this, this is my first year here, and I, I just came in this first like life ministry. And, okay, and, and you, okay. you realize how important it is, right? Uh, I learned this time. Great, okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> so your name is? My name is Joseph. Joseph. Okay, Joseph what? Joseph Kyler. Okay, John. Okay, so why are you involved in this uh, ministry? Uh, I'm involved in this ministry because uh, of my change, basically, from since eighth grade. Um, I feel like I didn't take it as seriously as it should have been taken, and being here at St. Anthony's and through all the work that they do and, you know, everything that they do here to support life uh, really inspired me to be a part of this ministry and, you know, just try to inspire others as well with the right. same beliefs. That's great. Now, I'm glad the fact that to see you know, young kids involved in doing something um, of a great ministry, important. So God is seeing what you're doing and he's very happy that you're taking a stand, which is great because now, you know, God could use you in situations where if somebody wanted an abortion, you know, to have an abortion, you can be able to try to explain to them why they shouldn't. So I just want to thank you. Okay. Um, but anyway, I just want to so thank you so much for joining us today. And um, and again, if you can like my Inspired Blessings Facebook page as well, so this way I'm trying to still get up to a thousand, get in there. Um, keep Inspired Blessings within arm's reach to help give you comfort when others are at a loss for words. Thank you and God bless. www.jeanmarieprince.com To accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer. I know that I am a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins and purify me. I know that you died and rose again to pay for my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. You took control when I was young, when I was not able. My Control when I was young, when I